Being the awesome class president that I am means that it's my job to show this new transfer student, Willow, what's what around here. So obviously this is the canteen. Heads up, don't eat the stew. Yuck. If you have any trouble finding something, just ask me. Well, I haven't seen you since middle school. What's up? Um, just still the same. Um, okay. Oh, you must be confused, but actually I already know Willow. You see, we went to the same middle school together, but to be honest, we never really talked to each other back then. She seems to still be as quiet as always. Oh, and by the way, I'm Natalie, but you can call me Nat. The next few days, I saw Willow always sitting in a corner of the classroom and doodling. She looked kind of lonely, so being a nice person, I decided to sit and talk to her. Hey, Willow. Nice shirt. She just gave me this weak smile, then continued doodling. Ugh, talk about awkward. The best thing I could do was just to stupidly smile back, then swiftly left. I didn't really bother with Willow after that. I mean, I said hi if we passed in the hallway or something, but that was it. But it turns out Willow's introverted tendencies hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. As when we were on our school expedition to the woods, I overheard them talking about her. Do you all think that Willow seems a bit weird? Yeah, you're totally right. One time I asked to borrow her eraser, and she just gave it to me without saying anything. She didn't even look me in the eye, just kept on drawing. It was so strange. Huh? Are they seriously gossiping about a new kid? Yeah, so she might not be too sociable. But people should just learn how to respect someone's personal differences, right? Hey, Willow is new here. I don't think it's very nice of you to gossip like this. Also, she's my friend from middle school, so please stop this. But just wondering, has she always been like this? Um, yeah, I guess. Actually, I was quite surprised to see her in our class. In middle school, her grades weren't that good, so it's kind of odd that she's in the top set with us. I could see the whole group was looking at me with surprised eyes. But hey, that was a few years ago. Now, so maybe she's changed. I quickly corrected myself. Then, a few days later, I was standing by my locker when suddenly my best friend Layla appeared and gripped my shoulders. Oh my god, have you heard the news? Everybody is saying Willow only got into top set because her parents made a huge donation to the school. Can you believe that? What? Who's spreading this absurd rumor? I don't know, but someone's saying that she wasn't that smart in middle school. Oh. My. God. Was the rumor culprit me? It was me! I did it! At the expedition! Oh no, I, I didn't mean to! Oh, how could I let this happen? Then when I entered class, I noticed a sobbing willow being comforted by some other students. I felt horrible, so I also went over to her and tried to cheer her up. Don't worry about it, willow. Everyone knows this rumor is a lie. Why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, I just transferred here. Who would hate me so much to say something so mean? Oh, man. I sure felt guilty. Oh, could things get any worse? Um, yeah. Turns out they can. As after class, Miss Holmes suddenly asked me and Willow to stay behind. Oh, no. Did she know I was the one who started the Willow rumor? I sat there, sweating like a turkey at Thanksgiving, waiting for Miss Holm to bust me. But then, to my surprise, she said, Nat, please, can you help me get to the bottom of this horrible rumor? Phew, what a relief. But at the same time, I was freaking out. How was I supposed to catch the person responsible when I was the one who started the rumor? Albeit accidentally. Oh, what a dilemma. Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. What about I blame it on a troublemaker? It's not like they would care anyway. Whilst I'm a straight-A student, and getting into trouble for this could affect my chances to get into a prestigious college and ruin my life. Right at that moment, this guy called Bob shoved past us, then leaned against the wall and scrolled through his phone. Bingo. Gotcha. I put one hand against the wall and gave him a suspicious look. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, fine. So... About this Willow rumor? Who did you hear it from? Bob just shrugged and continued staring at his phone. Or did you do it? Maybe you were bored. So you spread the rumor to tease the new girl. Am I right? Or what? Only by then, Bob looked at me. What? Are you crazy? I don't know this Willow girl. Besides, I was off all last week sick. Now leave me alone. Oh man, this was a massive fail. Now what should I do? I needed a minute to think. Okay, don't panic, Nat. You're smart, so you'll think of something. That's when I turned and caught a glimpse of Willow's sad face. 
Don't worry, I will find out who did it, I comforted her. But inside I was screaming. I hated lying to her, but this was an accident. I never meant to spread that rumor. At that moment, Layla appeared and said she wanted to help. Great, like this quest wasn't complicated enough. Ugh. Layla told us that she heard the rumor from this nerd, Ben. So we all tracked him down and asked him. But he heard it from some other dude, and it went on and on until a girl said that she heard it from Ashley. That's when I remembered that Ashley was on the talking group in the expedition. Oh no, I had to stop this encounter between us. So when they spotted Ashley, I started making weird noises and made out I had a stomachache. They were still going to her, so I had to scream loudly like I was in labor. In the medical room, I continued screaming as if I was in a lot of pain. The nurses diagnosed that it might be appendix pain, so I immediately needed to be transferred to the hospital. I instantly stopped screaming as soon as I heard that and said, it's just that time of the month. Phew, that was close. But at least I've successfully stopped them from investigating Ashley. Well, I spoke too soon, because right that second, Ashley walked into the medical room. But thank God she didn't mention me. Instead, she said Carl told her about it. Phew. To my luck, Carl was absent today, so the manhunt had to end here. It would unfortunately continue tomorrow, though. As we warily walked out of school, I glanced over at Willow and saw that she looked really down. Ugh, that made me feel so bad. So to make it up for her, I asked her if she wanted to grab a sandwich. My treat, of course. And she said yes. Mmm, that sandwich was so good. And Willow seemed to enjoy hers, too. It was great to see her happier, so I decided to extend our trip by going to the mall. Willow kept on glancing at this dress, but it was out of her price range, so being the awesome friend that I am, I bought it for her as a gift. Well, that's the least I can do after everything I'd done to her, right? But then I noticed something weird. When I was standing at the counter to pay for it, I turned around and saw her smirking. Then when she saw me looking at her, she immediately smiled and thanked me for the dress. Huh, so strange. The next day, the rumor scavenger hunt continued. Ugh. We cornered Carl and questioned him, but he couldn't remember where he heard it from. Layla asked him to think carefully, and he just shrugged and said he had no idea. Layla got suspicious, so she immediately reported him to the principal's office. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. The next thing I knew, we were being called out over the loudspeaker and summoned to go to the principal's office. Then Carl confessed that yesterday he got an anonymous message via Facebook saying that they were willing to pay him if he agreed not to tell the name of the person who told him the rumor. He showed us his phone, but all the messages and the user account didn't exist anymore. That's right. I was the anonymous user who contacted Carl yesterday. Thank God I deleted the messages and the account on time. But things weren't that simple. The principal decided to suspend Carl for withholding information. Finally! My plan worked! But why wasn't I feeling happy about it? On the contrary, I felt bad. Really, really bad. Blaming someone for my mistake wasn't right. I couldn't do that to Carl. So I stood up and blurted out, It was me all along. I started the rumor, but it was an accident. Well, and that's it. Cue a two-week suspension. Now Willow is refusing to hear my apology and everyone else thinks I'm some villain. Only Layla has stuck by my side and remained adamant there was more to the story. Then, a few days later, when I was trying to curb my boredom with potato chips and a Love is Blind marathon, Layla came by and told me the shocking news. There may be a chance that I wasn't the person who spread the rumor about Willow. The thing is, Layla continued asking around school and ended up with a girl named Rosa, who had a reputation for gossiping. Rosa told Layla that she was in the bathroom when suddenly a girl in the cabin next to her started telling her about the rumor. Rosa found it odd, so she bent down to see who it was, but the only thing she could see was a pair of pink Nike Air Force One. Then Layla asked me, You know who always wears those, right? I nodded. But objectively, there could be other girls who own the same shoes, correct? Fortunately, Rosa also noticed an important detail that will help us close the case. The right shoe has a tear mark. I checked our suspect's shoes, and they match. <gasps> so we finally knew who really did it. We just needed a plan to trap them. The next day, we called Willow to meet us at a cafe and told her that we found the real culprit. But when Willow arrived, she immediately got mad and yelled at me. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Maybe the person heard you when you were speaking about me during the expedition trip. As soon as Willow said that, Layla and I immediately looked at each other and grinned. What's so funny? I never told you that I spread the rumor at the expedition. I didn't even tell the principal. I only confessed that I was the one who said it. 
That's all. Willow looked shocked. Then we told her about Rosa and how she saw Willow's shoes. So Willow couldn't deny it anymore. Okay, it was me. I've never liked you and you think you're so perfect. So at the expedition when I overheard you talking about me like that, it made me so mad that I came up with the idea to spread the rumor about myself and then blame it on you. So you'd look like a horrible person and I'd get people's sympathy. A genius plan, right? Oh my, oh my. Who would have thought that the victim herself was actually the one who did the crime? Layla got so mad that she immediately wanted to report Willow to the principal, but I stopped her. I realized that it was partly my fault too. If I hadn't told people anything about Willow, then this never would have happened. So, well, after that, Willow and I stopped talking to each other. Actually, if I see her in the hallway, I'll purposefully walk the other way. But anyway... Thanks to this incident, I learned some valuable lessons. Never, ever gossip, as it's just not worth it. And also, choose your friends wisely. I was walking down the hallway to see the infamous dude standing there, doing his old trick to pick on some shy student. Get that filthy hand off him now! Then I grabbed him and threw him away like a piece of paper. Ah, that's better. Konnichiwa, I'm Yukiko from Japan, the daughter of Fuji, a famous martial arts master and the principal of a karate school. As his only child, it's up to me to evolve my warrior spirit and protect the weak from any baka. And this shy girl is Chiharu, the one I saved from a fight with the rival school gang. And ever since then, we became besties. Well, that's also how I earned the nickname Big Boss. I don't really care about it, but it does have some perks. I always had the best reserved seat next to the window, a desk drawer full of snacks, and on top of that, the kid was competing every day to do my homework. However, it also caused me some complications. I seem to have caught the eye of Jun, that rival school's gang leader. He bought me flowers and sent me these cheesy cupcakes every day, but I only gave him a no. Hey, he comes again. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you on my arm, girl. You keep go, never be alone. Tomato, tomato, throwing tomatoes. Even when the guard came carrying him away, he was still shouting. You keep go, die, scooter! Gosh, he's such a bug. Later, I came into the classroom and found everyone was going cuckoo over something. How noisy. That's the new student. He's just so handsome. As if you could tell someone's handsome from the back. But when he turned around, my eyes almost bulged from their sockets. It's Akira. Back when we were little, I adored Akira from the moment I first saw him. To me, he was even cuter than my favorite Mochi Shiba plushie. So I followed him everywhere and gave him all the candies I had. But he didn't like it that much. Why did you give her my candies? I like Akira. If you take him from me, I'll punch you. Hey, martial arts is not about fighting nonsense. You fierce kid, I hate you! After a while, Akira's family moved away and I'd completely lost contact with him. And now, he's back. Our eyes met, but he looked so cold and turned away. He didn't recognize me? Fine, it was so embarrassing facing him again anyway, so I decided to avoid him like the plague since then. And just like that, with his excellent academic ability, Akira soon fell into place as the top student, while I'm a bit different. I may have been a black belt in the karate, but exams were definitely not my thing. Congratulations, you've excelled at coming last again. So, Yukiko, I've appointed another student to tutor you. Please don't say his name, please don't say his name, please, please, please. Akira, I nearly died on the spot. Can anybody throw me to Mars, please? Man, it's super awkward. I kept looking at the ground when he blurted out, Hi, Yukiko. Long time no see. So, he does remember me? During the lesson, I couldn't focus, and my body was heating up. I kept my mouth shut while he was immersed in his lecture. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to ask. I plucked up my courage and said, Why didn't you like me when we were kids? You're still acting like before. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you, but your head's stuck in the clouds. Focus. He didn't say he hated me, did he? My heart fluttered again. Guess I'd have to try harder to get his attention then. But things didn't exactly go as planned. During the lessons with Akira, my phone rang constantly with calls and messages. Seemed like my goons were in trouble and they needed my help. I tried my best to ignore it but finally gave in. I've got something to do. I'll be right back. Hey, those morons. They're always messing around, then leave it to me. Problem solved. Only that, lucky for you, I got there in time. In time to cause more trouble, I'd have eaten them for breakfast without you. 
Back at school, I saw Akira standing at the gate with a clearly not happy face. Akira, it's not like what you think. I- You find it hard to study, but fighting seems to come naturally to you, huh? Who the freak are you? How dare you talk to my girl like that? Akira, I fight to help people. It's not nonsense. Help? I suppose brainless people only know how to talk with their fists. June immediately lunged at Akira, raising his fists at him. I had to hold him back right away and told him to go. The silence went on for some minutes, but when he was about to leave, I couldn't stand it anymore. Just because I liked you then, you think you have the right to look down on me? What? Hear this. I do like you, but it doesn't mean I will like you forever. I don't care, but I'm sorry if the truth I spoke made you feel that I looked down on you. And you know what? If you can't take my tutoring seriously, then we're done. Fine, go! See if I care. I, the big boss myself, have my own limits and cannot be chasing him all the time. But I couldn't deny that a pit was dropping to the bottom of my stomach. I just want to go home and curl up under cover. Then I arrived at my family's karate academy to see it was all sealed off. And my dad was sitting on the doorstep holding a letter. Dad? What happened? Yukiko, I'm bankrupt. I had no choice but to sell the academy to moneylenders. I've lost everything. No! This academy is our family legacy. My dad's life's work. We couldn't lose it. So I followed the address on the letter, but there I met an unexpected person. June! Turns out, his dad is my dad's creditor. All or nothing, I decided to get straight to the point to him. What do my family have to do to get our martial arts school back? June came over and whispered something in his ear. Then he pondered a while and said, My son kept goofing around. Change him and the martial arts school is back to yours. But how? I want you to get engaged to my son. Are you serious? You think I'm a joke? Then I immediately stood up and left. That was insane. Hey, why are you behaving like that? You're still asking why? It's down to that dude, isn't it? He's just some preppy know-it-all who doesn't even like you. You, you know nothing. He also likes me, I think. Is that so? Then prove it. Make Akira fall in love with you within two weeks and I'll convince my father to extend the deadline by three months. Fail and we get engaged. I'm the one who is always by your side. No way I agree with your stupid deal. Go ahead, refuse. The martial arts school will be permanently closed tomorrow. Wait, I, I, okay, I'm in. Lucky enough, I had Chiharu, the love guru, to help me cook up the perfect Get Akira scheme. Though she'd been single, like, forever. <laughs> Firstly, I told my gang that Akira'd soon to be my BF, and also their boss, so he deserved a special treat. Wherever he went, other students bowed 90 degrees to greet him. They tended to his every need, carried his bag, and were always at his service. But he seemed not so comfortable about this. Ask your goons to stop their nonsense. Okay, as long as you agree to my conditions. What? Tutor me again. Oh, and have lunch together. And walk to and from school? I, I can't. Okay then, guys. Fine. Secondly, you needed to find out what Akira liked, but he'll refuse to answer my questions for sure. My fake council survey will answer that. Then she handed out the paper to the whole class. My goofy Chiharu did get it done this time. Okay, according to a philosopher, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Akira's most favorite food is beef, so I rummaged through all the local supermarkets to find A5 Wagyu beef and prepared this perfect meal for him. Akira, eat this. Oh, thank you, Cream Puff. How come you know I like beef? How did you get in here? I know you miss me, so I come to visit. Before I could say anything, Akira shook his head and walked off. Okay, the first step is always the hardest. Next, seeing that Akira liked horror movies, I lied to him that Chiharu stood me up, so I had an extra ticket. It's insidious. How could he refuse? But as soon as we sat down, a familiar face caught my attention. June! Stop messing with me, you child! Eh? I'm a horror fan, just like you. We're sure a match made in heaven. I tried to ignore him and focus on my plan. This was the third time I watched this, so I knew exactly when there'd be a jump scare. It's time. I pasted a whining look on my face and was about to lean on Akira when June suddenly screamed his lungs out and jumped at me. It was not until he fell asleep that we had a bit of privacy. But from then till we left, Akira didn't speak a word and even asked to leave early. That's not okay. If things kept going this way, the whole plan would definitely fail. And it means I'd have to get engaged to June. No! The next day, I wasn't in the mood for dealing with my friends, so I lingered back in the classroom and read through Akira's notes. Oh, what's this? So, he does care about me. I can see one ray of hope. Akira, I want to improve my studies. Help me? Oh, okay. 
I was waiting outside for Akira to get us some bubble teas before we started when suddenly this thief darted out and snatched this old lady's bag. I dove in there to help, but he knocked me to the ground and ran away. Here you go. You're already fighting again? Don't you have anything better to do? I'm not fi- Forget it anyway. This brave young lady helped me. W what? Say no more. I'm a bad person no matter what. Then I stormed off without looking back. I was so stupid to catch feels with that insensitive one. Then my knee suddenly collapsed. Right then, a hand reached out and gently wrapped a bandage around my knee. Leave me alone. Get on my back. Shut up. Come on. I couldn't help but smile through my frown, and my heart did a cartwheel. I clambered onto his back and looped my arms around his neck. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you- It's okay. Are you dumb? An injured leg is not enough? It's nothing. And- you don't have to carry me like this. Am I heavy? What? <laughs> if I say yes, will you jump off? No way. After that day, Akira changed towards me. He joined me for lunch and even gave me a cute cupcake and agreed to go to Cat Cafe with me, even though he's allergic. And the classes went so smoothly. He was sweet like a lollipop and answered to all my silly questions. One time, I even accidentally saw him putting a lot of bandages in my locker. Aww. Winning the bet didn't seem so impossible then, but suddenly a girl approached him. It was Amaya, the school's popular girl. They chewed the fat. Then she leaned closer and whispered something to him. His face suddenly turned cold. Then he walked away. I was about to go after him when my phone beeped. Can't tutor you today. I have a play audition. So, turns out Akira and Amaya were both in this play. Fine, if Akira's Romeo, then I must be Juliet. I made it to the final round with my big boss energy, which meant I got to act out a scene with Akira to see who got the female lead between me and Amaya. Oh dear, look at them, being all clingy for what? That snake was all over my poor Akira like a rash. Ugh, if Chiharu hadn't constantly held me back, I'd have jumped there and given her a piece of my mind. And now it's time for me to shine. But why is Akira's face darkened? It's okay, maybe he's trying to be professional? My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love... My love, as adoring as... as a puppy dog's... nose. Um, yes, so I may have forgotten the words, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> he may pick me for my quick thinking, and... I choose Amaya, miss. Hey, why did you pick her? You shouldn't ask me. Ask yourself instead. Then he left with Amaya without glancing at me. But today is the end of the two-week deadline. I thought you'd have some feelings for me, too. It was pouring rain. I trudged home. All collapsed, tears and rain falling down all over my face. It was all over. The bed I play, the boy I love. I should have known better that it was me onto a loser right from the outset. Through my teary eyes, I saw June running towards me. Yukiko, what's wrong? Tell me. I, I lost. What? The bet between us. I lost it. I was wrong about everything. Who cares about the bet? You might get a cold, you know. Get inside. But why you're here? I don't care if you think it's too late. I'm telling you anyway. I know that I'm not perfect like him. I do say the wrong thing. I forget all the time, but I... I can protect and will never hurt you. So will you... marry me? My head was spinning, and in a moment of weakness, I said yes. At least I can save my dad's school and be with the right person who truly cares about me, instead of chasing some jerk who thought so low of me. I confided in Chiharu and my family about this, but kept it a secret from everyone else. <sighs> my father didn't approve it at first, but seeing my determination, he reluctantly agreed. It was our fitting day. I was with June discussing our wedding, but he seemed distracted and kept checking his phone. Then he said he had to take a call and hurried out. Sensing something was up, I followed him. Huh? Why is he talking to Amaya? You have to thank me for your new fiancé. I told Akira about your bet. Um, excellent job, as promised. It's not about the money. It's about making Akira mine. I don't get why both you and my beautiful Yukiko like that dude so much. Anyway, Yukiko's waiting for me. Gotta go. I couldn't believe what was in front of me. What the heck are you doing here? So it's you who made up everything the whole time? No, Yukiko. Let me explain. I trusted you, June. But look what you've done. You know what? You win. Do your worst. I don't care anymore. Then I ran home as fast as I could. Why do boys all fool me around like that? Right when I felt more disheartened than ever... I met the one that I didn't want to see the most. What was Akira doing here? Yukiko, let's talk. We have nothing to talk about. Chiharu told me what you're doing. You can't marry June. You liked me, so you mustn't fall for another one that easily. What? 
So you're the commander of my feelings now? Aren't you with Amaya? I'm not, and I never did. Listen, I was so angry to find out I was just part of your bet with Jun, so I ignored you. But then Chiharu told me why you did it and made me understand. So what? Anyway, you never liked me. I'm not gentle and too fierce, as you said before. Don't try to pity me. I don't. It's that I do like you. At first, I thought you were the type of person who'd use violence to solve any problem. But the more I got to know you, the more I learned about your pure heart. I shouldn't have judged you so quickly. I'm sorry. What just happened? I might be dreaming? But no, Akira, my seven-year crush, just confessed his love with me. So, Akira and I got together. Jun was furious about it, but he kept his word, and now my dad has three months to pay off his debt. I'm helping him out by teaching karate classes to earn money, something I really enjoy. Everything was great, too great, until... Yukiko, I gotta tell you something. I... I have to go abroad to study. I'll leave. Tomorrow. What? I don't understand. Why so sudden? I prepared for it months ago, but I couldn't tell you. I didn't want to make you sad. Will you... wait for me? Of course not. I may get bored and start liking another by that time. It's time. I stood still watching the train pass by, until I noticed Akira's melancholy smile. I liked you seven years ago, and now I still do. So of course I can wait for you. Come back soon, Akira. Finally, back in my natural habitat. Now these city kids could see what I'm capable of. Behold, my big, beautiful flame. They were in awe of my skill. When suddenly, the fun was put to an end by some overreacting teachers. They started yelling at me, saying there's a rule against fire. Ugh, how could you call this a campsite if campfire is not even allowed? Fire making is an essential survival skill, y'all. These boring city people don't know a thing. Who needs all their rules anyway? I know I don't. Hi, I'm Nova, the fire hazard. And I didn't always live in the city. I spent the first 14 years of my life on the road. Our family used to travel the country in our RV. We never stayed any place more than a couple of months. We foraged for food and slept under the stars. But my world was flipped upside down when my parents decided to divorce. My mom wanted to settle down and my dad would continue life on the road. I begged to go with dad, but mom had custody of me. I'd love to stay with you, my little birdie, but I have to go. No cage can hold me for too long. At that moment, I promised myself I would break free and spread my wings too. My mom and I then settled into a small two-bedroom apartment in Savannah, Georgia, where we were greeted by our neighbors, Brenda Foster, a middle school teacher, and her son, Scott, who I'd soon be attending school with. Mrs. Foster was really friendly, but from the moment I met Scott, I knew we wouldn't get along. City people were always grumpy and glued to their cell phones. Mom had to work two jobs just to make ends meet. Accountant by day, Burger King employee by night. Her colorful wardrobe was replaced with dull uniforms, and all we ate now was fast food. I still kept a sheer hope that one day, when Mom makes enough money, we will hit the road again soon, but... No, this is going to be our forever home. Things might be hard for you at first, but trust me, it'll be good for you in the long run. That sounds like she wants my life to be this boring and stuffy for all eternity. Then came school. There were tons of rules, and every moment of our day was scheduled. In just one morning, I got in trouble for going to the bathroom and for eating my lunch. And on top of that, every teacher complained about my penmanship and spelling. But things were worse when I was among other kids. I could hear their whispers everywhere I went. One girl even came up to me and asked why I wore weird hippie clothes. My clothes aren't weird, you are! Even when some of them invited me to sit with them at lunch, I felt like an outsider. Anyone down for some pink drinks after school? Not me, I'm saving up for the era's tour. Count me in! I'm entering my pink girl era! None of these words they say makes any sense to me. Finally, they asked about my old life. Well, we didn't have to eat this junk. We can get fresh vegetables by the road. And I know how to skin roadkills. And every day we tried many different fruits and fungi. But be careful, a simple mushroom could kill you. But by that point, I noticed they were either speechless or as pale as a ghost. Did I say something wrong? Every school day was a blur of confusing subjects. But today was my first music lesson, and I was so excited to finally do something I was good at. When the music teacher, Mr. Shapiro, asked if anyone wanted to perform for the class, I sprung up from my seat, ready to go. I confidently sang my favorite song, but halfway through, Mr. Shapiro interrupted me. We're learning classical music. That style is called reggae, which we don't teach here. <laughs> Nova's a hippy-dippy weirdo. The whole class erupted into laughter. 
What did I do? Ugh, Scott! I was so gonna give him a taste of my rosewood guitar, but everyone held me back. In the end, Mr. Shapiro said he'd be talking with our moms after school. Scott and his mom had already left before my mom came. Mr. Shapiro told her that I was a violent hothead who always dressed inappropriately. I waited for my mom to defend me, but she simply apologized. I'll talk to her about this later. Please excuse her behavior. She has never been to school before. Who was this woman and what had she done to my mother? Later, I told my mom how terrible school was. The constant staring and teasing. The way that everyone seemed to be a little afraid of me. Contrary to my expectation, she told me I should try harder to blend in. And she even had bought me normal clothes for school. Mom, clothes are my self-expression. I'm not changing just to fit in. What happened to you? Didn't you teach me to be myself? I did, but now I need you to blend in so you can make friends. I... I had to leave before bursting into tears. I couldn't stay in the stuffy apartment any longer. So I went out the window, climbed down the fire escape, and just ran away. But at one point, I realized I didn't know where to go. So I wandered around until I bumped into the Fosters, who insisted on walking me back home. Strangely, Scott seemed less annoying now, and kept looking awkwardly at me the whole way home. My mom was clearly surprised to see me when she opened the door. I felt like a joke, because she hasn't even noticed my rebellious great escape. I couldn't sleep that night. After thinking it over, I came to the conclusion that I could get my old life back if I found my dad. If only I knew how. The next morning at school, I went looking for the tools I needed to find my dad. Compass, flashlight, map. Scott? What are you up to in there? You first. I wanted to apologize for what happened in music class yesterday. Your turn. I'm gathering what I need to go find my dad, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Stop you? It looks like you need help. Those things may have helped you hundreds of years ago, but these days we just use the internet. I didn't want Scott's help, but maybe he was right. I had no clue where to start, and I could hardly even figure out how to use my cell phone. <sighs> maybe I need a little help to learn about the internet. Follow me. Scott spent that afternoon teaching me the basics of the internet. He also asked about my old life, and I found myself telling him everything. All the things I missed and hated about this new life. To my surprise, he was understanding. His mother was a single mom too, and it had been years since he heard from his father. After that day, I thought I hated him a bit less. About a week later, I felt like I was ready to start my search. Little did I know, googling my dad's name would give me literally millions of results. I was about to give up when I saw some people looking for their dogs. Hmm, that just gave me an idea. I printed as many flyers as the library would allow, and spent the next day putting them up around the neighborhood. I was surprised by a strange phone number. Hello? Yeah, hi. I just saw a clueless hippie wandering around, and I think they matched the description you provided. I was over the moon by how quick I got a response. But then I saw Scott, half a block away, grinning at me with a cell phone in his hand. That internet thing you taught me is useless. Finding people is not that fast, even with the internet. Your best bet would be the database at the police station. Are you sure you... I didn't need to hear any more words and immediately flagged down a police car passing by. Over here, officer! The officer pulled over and rolled down his window. Morning, sir. Please take us to the station. What are you kids doing? Where are your parents? Well, I'm looking for my dad. I heard the officer speak into his intercom, saying he was bringing a lost child back to the station. Well, that's not what I meant, but whatever does the job, I guess. As he led me into the back of the car, I remembered. Sir, he's with me. Should we bring him too? Correction, two lost kids. Scott was obviously stunned as the police officer escorted us into his car. It's hilarious. <laughs> of course, I need my sidekick with me to help me find that database thingy. Shortly after arriving at the station, the officer left the room to get us some water. As soon as the door closed behind him, I sprung into action. I had to look in every corner, but Scott wasn't helping. Come help me. Where could that database thingy be in this room? What? No, dummy. It's in here. Then he jumped to the computer and did some clicking. Type your dad's name here. Keep an eye out. In an instant, a file with my dad's info came up. I printed it out and sprinted home before the ink could dry. My heart was pounding as I dialed my dad's number. Hey, yo. Dad, it's still good to hear your voice. Uh, who is this? It's me, Dad! Complete silence on the other end. Did I call the wrong number? It's me? Nova? Nova! Glad to hear from you. Guess what, kid? I've been up to all kinds of adventures. Then he talked to me about his amazing trips that I would have loved to be on. Then I asked where he was so I could go find him. I live in the moment, my little birdie. I go where the road takes me. Please, Dad, let me tag along. 
Okay, meet me at the exit of the interstate at 10 p.m. tomorrow. He ended the call before I could say anything else. I felt the sudden urge to cry for some reason. They must be happy tears. I was finally seeing my dad again. But how could I get there? Maybe my sidekick Scott could help me. If he had made it back from the police station... Oopsies! I ran to Scott's apartment, and to my surprise, he answered the door. Hey, how did you get home? Once I explained to the officer that you were just a little eccentric, he let me go. I'm sorry I left you there. I wasn't really thinking. Oh, I spoke to my dad, and he's picking me up tomorrow night. So, I need your help to get to the highway. The highway? What kind of parent asks his 14-year-old to meet him at the highway at night? Did he even ask you how you were doing? Or your mom? He clearly doesn't care at all. Wait, yeah, he really didn't ask. But dad probably was just busy. We can talk all about it tomorrow when we meet anyway. How dare Scott think ill of him? What do you know about my dad? He's a free spirit, and I should be traveling with him. Life's all about being spontaneous. My mom doesn't even understand it anymore, so I don't expect you to. But if you don't want to help me, fine. I'll figure it out myself. Then I stormed off. The night after, I was struggling with Google Maps. My phone was suddenly snatched out of my hand. I'll take you there. You might get lost if you go alone. I was still a little upset about yesterday, but that was nice of him. Plus, Scott was right. I would get lost on my own. We arrived early and waited. The hours dragged by, so I called Dad several times, but no answer. When I saw it was past 11 p.m., my call finally came through. Oh, man. You were there now? Our bus passed Savannah a while ago. <laughs> we're having a grand party. You should see. Oh, uh, well, maybe we'll cross paths again soon. Bye, little birdie. He hung up right away. I noticed Scott watched me for a reaction, but I couldn't hold it in and burst into tears. Scott got us on the bus to go home. I was sobbing the entire way and couldn't talk through all the tears. Eventually, Scott spoke up. When my parents divorced, I spent a lot of time being mad at my mom, too. I couldn't understand why she didn't make my dad stay. But she did try to, right? Nope. She just accepted it. And I eventually realized that she wasn't weak like I had thought. She chose to stay to make sure my life was normal. Leaving would have been easy. And what she did, keeping the lights on actually took a lot more strength. What Scott said sounded surprisingly mature. After that, we sat in silence for a while. I understood what Scott was saying, but I didn't think it applied to my case. My mom was just not the person she used to be. We arrived home very late. Before we parted, Scott said, Why don't you ask your mom why she decided to settle down here? Kids don't always understand why parents do certain things. Maybe you should hear her out. I nodded and took a deep breath before opening the door. My mom was on the phone with the cops, and as soon as she saw me, she ran to give me the biggest hug I had gotten in a long time. She asked me where I'd been, and I told her everything. How I tried to find Dad, how he stood me up, and things Scott said earlier. She listened to me attentively, then said what Dad did was terrible, but not exactly out of character. You know how we stopped by a town from time to time? Working temporary jobs like waiting tables and washing cars, right? What you didn't know is that your father always messed up and got fired a few days after he started. So he decided that he'd look after you while I worked. I didn't realize how hard mom had always been working while me and dad were just carelessly having fun. Then I asked why she chose that life in the first place. When I met him, I was working a 9-to-5 job that I hated. While your dad was all about, the world is a book, traveling makes you a storyteller. Of course, that sounded fascinating, so I quit my job and set myself free on the RV we bought. But why did you decide to settle down after all these years? After having you, I realized our wandering life wasn't a good environment for a kid. I was worried you'd have a hard time once you got older, especially because your dad wasn't being helpful and was only being a bad example for you. Besides, homeschooling is difficult. We aren't teachers. You deserve to grow up in a stable home, have friends your age, and create deep connections with them. I got you two, and... and people we met from all over the country. That's not enough, honey. I thought I should give you a normal life while you're still young. You'll be better prepared to make your own decisions later as an adult. It was unfair to you. Because you didn't choose that life. We did. The resentment I had towards my mom melted away. In its place was a profound gratitude for all that she sacrificed. I wasn't good with words, so I told her that the best way I could. Do you miss our old life? Well, yes. But for now, you're my number one priority. After the hurt's gone, it was time to heal. I tried to focus on my lessons and learn the rules. My mom even helped me pick out clothes that were more appropriate for school, but still felt like me. 
I tried my best to enjoy the same movies as other kids and learned to play their favorite songs on my guitar. Soon enough, they became my new friends. I continued to grow even closer to Scott, my friend and partner in crime, from the start. Still, my mom and I agreed that we shouldn't totally abandon our love for travel, and she promised that we would plan a few big road trips every year, starting this summer. I can hardly wait for our trip to Niagara Falls with Mrs. Foster and Scott. Aha! A snowstorm's coming! Perfect for a race. Let's go, my loyal soldiers! Looks like a big storm, guys. Shall we head home? Scared already? Cowards! I was born and raised in the snow. This is nothing. Then I signaled for Bam and Holly to speed up, but they stopped and barked nonstop instead. Is that pile of snow moving? I hurriedly ran over to check. OMG! It's a boy! No, an angel with blonde hair. My heart was racing. Is this love at first sight? H help me. No matter how much Eldon and Era objected, I insisted on bringing this guy back to my place. I had to take care of him myself. Oh, looks like he'd woken up. Are you okay? Where am I? You're in my house. I'm Brenna, by the way. I found- Oh, God. Huh? What's wrong? Something on my face? Um, no. It's just that you're too beautiful. Like a real-life Snow White. Then he said his name's Beavis. He came here to travel, but unfortunately was met by the snowstorm. Yeah, it's gonna snow heavily in the next couple of days, so you should stay here until you recover. After a few days, Beavis got better, so I showed him around. On the sledge. Although Bam and Holly were practically just walking, Beavis still freaked out so much, he huddled up against me. <laughs> Hold on tight! I'm speeding up! We went up a hill, then through a pine forest, and arrived at, ta-da, probably the biggest frozen lake he had ever seen. I taught Beavis how to drill a hole in the ice, then he excitedly dropped the fishing line. The following days, I continued taking him sightseeing, and we were basically inseparable. We went to see polar bears kayaking among the icebergs. I taught him how to make instant snow by spraying boiling water into the cold air, and we even watched the spectacular auroras together. Wow, I've never seen such beautiful scenery before. Yeah, and I'd never seen such a beautiful face before. Just like that, Beavis spent day after another with me here in the Arctic. It's been so much fun, but for some reason, my friends Eldon and Era were not having any of it. They seemed to hold grudges against him or something. One time when I was arranging supplies in the root cellar, I heard Beavis's ear-piercing scream. I hurriedly checked and saw a white fox dashing out, followed by giggles outside the window. You're such a chicken, big city boy. It's just an extra-large kitty. Then Eldon and Era burst into laughter. Ugh, can those two show a little hospitality? At dinner, I cooked him my signature dish as an apology to Beavis for those naughty friends of mine. He was totally cool about it and even told me stories about his friends back at home and about their lives in Florida. Whoa, it sounds so magical. I wish I could lounge around on a beach and soak up the sun while enjoying my coconut drink too. I went to sleep dreaming about the beautiful urban life. Suddenly, a knock on my bedroom door woke me up. I stumbled to answer it and saw Beavis. Hey, Brenna, could you take me to the toilet? It's too dark outside and that fox might come back. <laughs> How cute! He's really good at coming up with excuses to be with me. W while waiting for Beavis, I planned out what we're gonna do tomorrow. As he got back from the outhouse, ooh, I couldn't contain my excitement and told him right away. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I'm all better now. Maybe it's time for me to go home. Huh? Why so sudden? I'm sorry, but I really can't take this anymore. No, how could my first love end this fast? It hasn't even started. Brenna, it's so tough for me to live here. I don't want to boil ice every time I need a cup of water or go to the toilet out in the freezing cold. And how tiring that we can only go around on sleds. But even if we had a car, there's literally nowhere to go in this gloomy place. But still, I've endured it all this whole time because I can't leave you. I think I'm in love with you. Beavis, I... How about you going to the city with me so that we could stay together? Oh my, it turned out that we both have feelings for each other, but because of that, he had to suffer in silence. Such a sweet guy. And it's true, he wasn't built for this harsh climate. He didn't belong here. The next morning, I told Eldon and Ira that I wanted to hang out in Miami for some days. Rana, I don't think it's a good idea. That pansy boy must have coaxed you to do this. Don't buy those sweet words. I tried my best to explain how nice and polite Beavis was, but they wouldn't listen. Girl, he got you all blinded. You've only known him for a few days, not enough to tell what kind of person he is. Can't believe you're just one of those shallow girls. 
Who are you calling shallow? Yeah, right. I was blinded. Blinded by his kindness. Then I stormed off, leaving Eldon and Ira behind. I just worry about you. Yeah, right. Worry? Or are you just jealous of me? I came home to a shivering Beavis. He couldn't stand this freezing weather anymore, and I couldn't bear seeing him like this either. So I told Beavis that I would go with him. Look how happy Beavis was, and I too was excited to visit his hometown. It's gonna be fun. It took only less than two days for us to arrange things out, buy the tickets, ask Ira to look after Bam and Holly, and we're good to go. After a long flight, we're finally here. It looks like a completely different world in front of my eyes. Crowds of people rushing left and right. Suddenly, I spotted something. Oh, that looks just like my Holly. What a spoiled husky. At that age, my two buddies were already the best sled dogs in the area. Oopsie. City folks don't seem too friendly, do they? Huh? What else? Why is it moving so fast and nonstop? While I hesitated to take a step, Beavis suddenly carried me up in the air. Don't worry, I got you. Oh boy, he's so sweet. Beavis then got me transformed into a city girl. He took me shopping, then got my hair dyed. I really like my silky black hair, but Beavis said this looked better on me. This too, baby girl. This is a tattoo parlor, isn't it? Seeing my confusion, Beavis explained that couples here usually get tattooed on important occasions, and today marks the first day that you walk into my world, so I want it imprinted in my heart. So Beavis and I got matching tattoos that he chose, a weird-looking red shape behind the ears. It might not look pretty, but was definitely unique enough to be special for just us two. Once we were done shopping, we went to a luxurious villa. Oh my, is he taking me to his parents? I'm so nervous, not sure how I should behave when Beavis comforted me. They were nice, don't worry, just do as they tell you to. Just then, the main door opened. Everyone turned to look at us full of excitement. This must be the first time Beavis took his girlfriend home then. Uh, hello, hello everyone. I... Suddenly a man walked straight over and lifted my chin. Very similar, but... But this, but that. Just look at her birthmark. It's Demi. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. Our, Our beloved, beloved daughter, daughter has returned. returned. I was still processing everything when everyone rushed to hug me and bombarded me with questions. I turned to Beavis for help, but where is he? What's going on? I tried to explain that I was Brenna, born in the snowy Arctic. Both my parents had passed away and this was my first time leaving my hometown, but to no avail. My precious daughter, Beavis told us everything. You fell in the woods and had a concussion, so you're having a temporary memory loss. Just get rested for now, okay? Oh, where is Beavis then? I gotta ask him something. Don't worry, your savior will be well rewarded. You'll see him tomorrow. <sighs> everything happens so fast, I'm totally lost. But the most I could do now is to wait until tomorrow. I'm sure Beavis will clear things up. Upon catching sight of Beavis, I immediately unloaded it all onto him. Shush, just listen to me first. Turned out, Beavis worked here for the Atchley's family. He escorted their daughter, Demi, on a trip to the mountains, but she ran away. Mrs. Atchley was utterly furious about this and used his ill mother to blackmail him into finding Demi. That's why he risked going out into the snowstorm where we met. But why me? I have nothing to do with Demi. You and Demi look just like twins. <gasps> when I saw you, I couldn't believe my eyes either. I did what I did because I was worried for my mom. I hope you can forgive me and help us, please. I'll soon find Demi. So, you were only using me? No, I'm truly in love with you, Brenna. I didn't want to be away from you, and you deserve a much better life here, with me. But... Just wait until I find Demi, then we will run away and live happily together. Poor Beavis. He seriously had the worst luck. If I were him, I guess I would do the same. So I reluctantly lived as Demi. Luckily, her parents thought I lost my memory, which made it not too hard to be her. One day, I received a text from Eldon. I suddenly remembered that I'd been away from home for almost a month. I wonder if Bam and Holly miss me. To say I was not one bit homesick would be a lie. But there's no way I'd speak to Eldon. So I called Ira to catch up on things and asked for her help in the search for Demi. It had been a few days already, but neither Ira nor Beavis had heard anything about Demi. Feeling too restless, I went for a walk in the garden. Wait, what's that noise? Eldon? See what you got yourself into, idiot. Told ya, I saw right through him. Why are you here? And what are you talking about? Ira already told me. Beavis obviously only sees you as someone else's replacement. He doesn't love you. Let's go home. No, let me go. Stop bothering my girl. Leave me alone, please. You're only making things worse. This place has everything and is much better than a hellhole in the middle of nowhere. Live there all you want. Don't drag me down with you. 
Eldon immediately let my hand go. He didn't say another word, but gave me a disappointed look. Was that too much? Well, he's the one who kept sticking his nose in others' business. Who is he to control me? After that day, I still saw him lurking around the mansion sometimes. So annoying. Who in their right mind would be out in this scorching heat? Today, Mom, I mean Mrs. Ashley, suddenly took me shopping. I guess having a family like this isn't too bad, huh? She said tonight I was attending an important dinner party, so I had to put on this tight dress along with a pair of killer heels. They looked pretty good, but I really couldn't breathe. Jeez, how can anyone do this? It's literally harder than walking on thin ice. Ah! Phew, that was close. Thank you, sir. I- Careful, I can't be around to protect you all the time. Alden, why is he still so kind to me? I wanted to say something to him, but Mom already signaled for me to hurry up from afar. I rushed to the car, leaving him there. Thanks to Mom's preparation, the guys there were staring at me without blinking, especially the special guest. Mom told me that I was supposed to be smiley and friendly to Otis, but how was I supposed to do that when he kept rambling all these boring stories? My eyes wandered around, searching for Beavis and an excuse to leave. What are you looking for, sweetie? The most important person is already right in front of you. Ugh! I pushed him away, then ran off. Ah, there Beavis is. We should get out of this boring place. Oh, Mrs. Ashley's here too? What? That's it? I risked being in danger just to find her and bring her back to you. Don't take me for a fool. I'm only her stepmother, but I can tell that girl isn't Demi. I just let you off since she resembled her quite a bit. You're in no position to demand. But didn't you get Otis all smitten also? Isn't that all you care about anyway? So give me my money. I had to rack my brain to sweet talk that girl into coming here. That means your sickly mother doesn't exist either, does she? Oh, sweetie, you've heard it all. So what if that's true? You won't get a dime. I'll expose your scheme. Where are you going, sweetheart? It's bedtime. So my phone was confiscated and I'd been locked in this room for three days straight. They wanted me to give in and date Otis, but no way. I tried every possible way to escape, but always ended up getting caught. One morning, I was woken up by dogs barking. Annoyed, I went to the balcony to check and saw Eldon and Bam. Eldon signaled for me to stay calm and flew a paper plane to me, then swiftly left. Let's see. <gasps> Fine then. If that's what he wants, let's end things here once and for all. I agreed to date Otis like the Ashleys demanded. I even enthusiastically chose my own outfit, did my makeup with a cute hairstyle. Mr. and Mrs. Ashley were very pleased with that. They couldn't hide their excitement and even stood at the gate to welcome Otis when he came to pick me up. As his supercar arrived, Otis the preppy guy had just stepped out when Eldon signaled Bam to charge at him and scared him away. Meanwhile, the Ashleys were screaming for security. I was gonna leave in the midst of the chaos, but... Don't you dare run away! Ugh! Holly jumped out of nowhere and made Beavis fall to his knees. Holly then bit on his pants and dragged him around. Good job, baby! Right then, a car stopped in front of us and a girl stepped out who looked just like me. <gasps> this must be Demi! Who are you? Why do you look exactly like my daughter? What kind of father are you to not recognize your own child? This is precisely why I ran away from home. After that, Demi exposed her stepmother and Beavis's evil plan in my stead. Demi's dad frantically apologized to his daughter and admitted that he'd always been so caught up with work that he overlooked family and his wife's scheme. Get out of my sight at once and don't even think about bringing a dime with you. Then Eldon dragged me into the car and in the driver's seat was... Era! Thank you, Ira. Just me? Eldon did most of it. I shyly looked over at Eldon. Thank you, and I'm sorry. It's okay, we're friends after all. I'll take care of you at all costs. Um, uh, anyway, just hope that you've learned your lesson now, Brenna. Not all that glitters is gold. Eldon's right. This beautiful city is glamorous, but I don't belong here. I belong to the wind and snow, to the winterland I call home. Time to go back. The trip to the city was like a fever dream, but let's leave it all behind, cause I'm busy racing with Eldon. As expected, he's always as slow as a turtle. Hi, this is for you. For me? What's the occasion? The day we stop being friends. Brenna, what do you say if we become more than friends? Hey guys, my name is Leah, a typical nerdy girl and a huge fan of Ace, the most talented, brilliant, incredible actor ever. But in the limelight, I transform into Aubrey Fern, the glamour star of the hottest movie right now. Follow me crush with the real life ace. How is it possible? Well, I just got really, really lucky. That day, I was walking home from college when I suddenly felt like someone was following me. 
Hmm, the sketchy guy was definitely up to no good. So I changed my route through this dinky alley, trying to lose him. But he stayed relentless and chased after me. So, you've chosen death then. When he was ten feet away, I picked up a trash can and dumped it on his head. Grabbed a golf club nearby and started smashing non-stop. You creep! You mess with the wrong, innocent, helpless little girl! Stop! Who are you calling creep? I'm an artist manager from Moon Entertainment. Wait, Moon Entertainment? As an Aces management label? Then why didn't you say so? Turns out his name was Grayson, and he's not here for my angelic voice or charismatic dance moves, but guess what? For my face. <laughs> this guy must be a comedian. A few days ago, you used the celebrity twin filter on TikTok, and the result was Aubrey Fern, an actress under our management, correct? Uh, yeah. Moon Entertainment actually created that filter. We were looking for someone who looks just like Aubrey to replace her. Okay, I must have hit his head too hard. I'd better get away from him quick. But he caught me right away and immediately teleported me to the company headquarters. Even the CEO himself came to welcome me. They were dead serious about me filling Aubrey's shoes. Heck, her whole identity. Apparently, the actress found showbiz too stressful and decided to quit. But she was one of the top faces of the company, so they couldn't just let her disappear. Out of nowhere, the door swung open and entered Ace. He rushed towards me, genuinely concerned, and gently dabbed my nose dry with his own sleeve. So, this is who I'll be dating? Looking forward to that. W what d d d dating That's right, Leah. I've just released a statement of Ace and Aubrey dating. People are going wild. As the new Aubrey, you'll get a once-in-a-lifetime chance to be Ace's girlfriend. Just for show, of course. But who knows? He seems into you. I I think I just hit the jackpot. Aubrey 2.0, here she comes. The next day, I arrived at a top beauty salon for a celebrity makeover. From the shine of my hair to the size of my pores, everything had to be flawless. And you wouldn't believe how many designer outfits and jewelry I got to try on. I look like a million bucks. Ace was gonna freak out the next time he saw me. You may look like Aubrey, but your personality needs some work. Jeez, who spat in your coffee this morning? Anyway, you better tidy up, cause I'm moving into your house. What? No way! You and your spiteful mouth should stay ten feet away from me, or else I'll call security. Huh. Guess what, Miss Diva? It says right here in the contract that your manager, aka me, has to supervise you 24-7 so you don't spill anything confidential. You're bluffing. Am I, though? I stared at the contract, too stunned to speak. Why did I sign without reading it first? The guy's a nightmare. He even pretended to be an Italian exchange student and followed me to class. Wordly, all the girls on campus were gushing over his fake accent. Say un porco. <laughs> I don't know what's more pathetic, his Italian accent or that you guys are actually swooning for that. Uh-oh, these girls did not know how to take a joke. Whoa, you guys wouldn't want to touch my face. My contract says it's worth, but before I could say another word, Grayson dragged me away like a rag doll. Other than that, life as Aubrey was amazing. I got to appear on loads of magazine covers, attended a bunch of exclusive events, and starred in the most anticipated rom-com of the year. And you know what the best part was? Ace was right by my side. Imagine being this close to your idol every day. You could just fall head over heels for him, literally. But no worries, people would still think that you're cute, as long as you know how to pose for the camera. One time, I heard Ace say that his ideal type is a girl with healthy, sun-kissed skin. So, I figured I should give Tanny a try. But when I arrived at the film set the next day, everyone laughed at me, saying I looked like a half-dried-up squid. This was so humiliating. Bet Grayson had a blast making fun of me. But instead, he rushed to put his jacket over my head to cover me up. Why are you trying so hard for that narcissist? You look ridiculous. I think she looks kind of cute. Just needs a bit of blending. It's Ace! He's standing up for me! His handsome face suddenly came super close to mine. Care to go on a date with me tonight? Yes, 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 a million times yes! I immediately went home after work, scrubbed off the stupid tanning lotion, and got ready at lightning speed! We're meeting at this private restaurant on the 32nd floor of a luxurious building. And there Ace was, the brightest star amongst the city lights waiting for me. He was so gentle and sweet. We were having the best time. His dreamy eyes looked at me like he was about to say something. Something sweet. I can sense it. When flashlights came from nowhere, blinding us. Paparazzi? 
How did they get in here? Aubrey, is it really you in the picture? Ace, what does it feel like being cheated on? What are they talking about? Just then, a strong arm suddenly grabbed my waist and pulled me out of the crazy crowd. It was Grayson! I'd never felt happier seeing his grumpy face. We got into the van, and Grayson showed us his article of me kissing a random guy at a beach resort. What? This must have been photoshopped. We gotta clear this up. Ace didn't listen to my words. His face was twitching in anger. Do you have any idea how this affects my career? Me being cheated on? That's just pathetic. Pull over. I need to get out. I can't stand you right now. He slammed the door shut, then stormed off. I was speechless. I'd never seen this scary and mean side of him before. Don't mind him. He can be a real douchebag sometimes. I'll get you some ice cream, then we'll go home, okay? Grayson's words cheered me up. I'm honestly touched by this cold hands, warm heart kind of guy. Grayson tried his best to shield me from the public backlash, but it was all for nothing. As Moon Entertainment let false rumors spread like wildfire, now Aubrey, aka me, was being badmouthed everywhere. A tramp? A bimbo? Some even said I was a stain in Ace's career. That's it. I couldn't do this anymore. I launched into the CEO's office ready to give him a piece of my mind, but he was just chilling with Ace. Leah, just the person I'm looking for. I'm about to make an announcement stating Aubrey is not the one in the picture, and you and Ace are still deeply in love. No thanks. I'm here to quit. This pressure is all too much. Now, now, calm down. Maybe a nice trip to the city of love will help you relax, right, Ace? Of course. Let staff fix this while we take a break and maybe get to know each other better. Come on, I'll drive you home. The last time we met, Ace went bonkers on me, and now he's being as nice as pie. Talk about Jekyll and Hyde. Suddenly, he stopped the car at the riverbank and turned to me. Leah, I was wrong to take it out on you. I've never faced high pressure like that before, and I... I lost my mind. And you know what? That night, I was about to speak from my heart. I love you, Leah. He pulled me in for a kiss. It was so out of the blue, I, I didn't even know what to think. But then he opened his eyes and looked at me, so in love, I couldn't help but give in. Baby, I can't wait to be with you in Paris. It was everything I'd ever wanted, right? That night, Moon Entertainment finally cleared out the rumor. That's not all. Pictures of Ace and I kissing were making the headlines. How did they get this picture? Those paparazzi are so sneaky. I was so perplexed and for some reason kept thinking about Grayson and how he would feel hearing this news. I came to the roof to see him sitting deep in thought. Hey, haven't you heard? They cleared up my scandal. Remember, that's not your scandal, Leah. Don't let Moon Entertainment manipulate your life. You don't trust them? Yeah, and I don't trust Ace either. It's got nothing to do with Ace. He's my boyfriend for real now. Plus, we're going to Paris for a romantic break. Grayson let out a solemn sigh. I guess he was just trying to protect me from the company. But he didn't need to protect me from Ace, right? He still went with us to Paris and lingered in the background with a stone-cold face. I was embracing this moment with Ace, and as we strolled together, a group of fangirls recognized him and flocked around us. One of them even held him back, crying like a lunatic. Ace, don't you miss me? You promised! What are you talking about? Leave me alone. He pushed the girl aside, then dashed out of the crowd. I tried to follow him, but a hand suddenly snatched mine. It was a girl burying her face under a mask and pair of sunglasses. She snuck a USB into my hand and said, Ace's darkest secrets are in here. You're scaring me. What do you want? The girl tried to reply, but Grayson cut in between us and pulled me away. We ran and ran under the sunlight of a spring day in Paris. Why was this single moment way more romantic than anything I had with Ace, my idol? Could it be that I have fallen for Grayson? Grayson took me back to the hotel, looking somber as he turned to leave. At that moment, I realized I didn't want to let him go. He was the only one who understood me and got me through this crazy double life, not Ace. Neither he nor his celebrity lifestyle suit me. Ace would be better off without me in the way of his stardom. Grayson had tried warning me many times. Maybe the girl in the mask knows something. I plugged the USB into my laptop and a video popped up on the screen. There's proofs of Moon Entertainment manipulating the media all these years to cover up for Ace's scandalous private life. Dark things us fans have never seen before. His anger issues, his drinking problem, his cheating scandal. I scrolled down to see a dozen pictures of him with different girls kissing. And they're not just random girls, but his actual fans. I know them. Look, it's the crying girl this afternoon. And this one is a well-known admin of one of his fan sites. 
This was unbelievable! He'd been playing his entire fandom for fools! <clears throat> right then, I heard grunting sounds coming from the balcony. Someone was trying to climb into my room! Wait, the stranger who gave me the flash drive? For all I knew, she could be a dangerous stalker, given all this proof she somehow had. Panicked, I grabbed the USB, ran straight to Grayson's room, calling for help. His door opened just as the stalker reached us. He hid me behind his back and faced that crazy masked girl. Better not make another move or you'll be locked up in jail right this minute. The girl stopped, hands in the air. The moment we took off her disguise, I was shocked to the core. It was Aubrey. I know this seems crazy, but please listen to me. What you saw in that USB is the truth. Ace's manager provided me with it. What USB? And you didn't choose to leave the industry? The CEO even made all the staff delete your contacts and basically erase your existence. That snake has been lying to you all this time. I didn't quit. I just wanted a little time off to deal with my mental health. So I went on a digital detox for a while. When I came back, I found out I was already fired without a reason and replaced by a lookalike. I was so devastated I didn't know what to do. Luckily, Ace's manager reached out to help me. He's witnessed Ace's true face, and he despised it. But Moon Entertainment's trapped him in a contract lasting till the end of Ace's career. There's no way out for him until now. His manager has been secretly collecting and sending me evidence, then told me to come to you, because you're also one of their victims. Just like us. Gosh, this was unbelievably messed up. You know where he went after our encounter this afternoon? I shook my head in confusion as she showed me a video of Ace making out with one of the girls earlier at a party. How could he be so shameless? Did us fans look like fools to him? No need to hesitate anymore. I'll take this douche down, in the name of his devoted fandom. I went on to play Ace's girlfriend both in the movies and in real life, while Aubrey used my identity to find a new part-time job as a monitoring staff at the National Broadcasting Station, the organizers of this year's Movie Sensation Awards. No way Ace wouldn't attend, since he was nominated for Best Leading Actor. Poor guy. He has no idea what's in store for him. <laughs> and there Aubrey is. With the help of Grayson, no one even notices we've switched back. I've also managed to earn Aubrey the host position for this year's award. Now take a seat. The show has begun. And the Best Leading Actor goes to... Ace! Classic Ace played out his surprised and emotional act when he got on stage. I would like to thank my fans for the support they've given me all these years. I'd be nothing without them. Yeah, right. Now, Mike, off. Lights, off. Here's the evening's main event. Ace's true face as a deceitful womanizer. Everyone gasped and started whispering. I shine a spotlight on the audience and a girl stands up. I'm one of the girls in those pictures. He told all of us girls he and Aubrey are just a publicity stunt so that we would date him in secret. I was his photographer once, and he literally screamed at me for 20 minutes because I didn't get his good angle. I'm a bartender at his frequented bar where he gets wasted, hits on girls, and starts fighting with random guys every day. The audience start booing and throwing things at Ace. The cherry on top is that this whole fiasco is being broadcasted live worldwide. It's safe to say no one will ever be fooled by this douchebag again. Which means my work here is done. I go outside to see paparazzi and fans swarming around Aubrey. She handles them so gracefully it looks effortless. The limelight isn't for me, and that's fine. I'm glad I'm back to being a normal girl who doesn't have to care about public opinion. Best part is, I get to date my idol manager boyfriend over there. I'm thinking a nice home-cooked dinner to celebrate our successful plan. And our one-month anniversary as well. What do you think? I was in my room, humming to the latest Harry Styles song and preparing gifts for my new classmates. Balenciaga? Hmm, nope. Too cheap. Gucci? Louis Vuitton? Before I could make a decision, my dad barged in. Sally, why did you give money to that scammer? He's poor, Daddy. And? Okay, okay. He said his mom wrote Baby Shark, and you know I like that song. Dad was always nagging me, but she did write the song, right? Anyway, I'm Sally Mayers, the youngest daughter of Frederick Mayers, the CEO of the super successful agency Modeling Sync. I suppose you'll say my life was extravagant, but hey, sharing with others isn't extravagant. Daddy says I should stop worrying about handbags and intern at his company. But how will a hot young thing like me slave away in a boring job, huh? So I moved out and was on the search for my calling in life and my Prince Charming. One day, I was out shopping when, bump, our eyes met, and I didn't know if it's because of the fall or not, but I felt dizzy seeing his angel face. Then suddenly, he leaned toward me and stole my first kiss. 
Sorry about that. I haven't paid my rent, so I couldn't let my landlord see me. And kids, that's how I met your father. Uh, not yet, but soon to be anyway. <laughs> A cute guy falling in my arms had to be fate, so I invited him to live in my house while he earned enough to pay his rent. His name's Robert, and he's handsome, a great cook, and he adores animals. He's practically perfect. Hmm, except for his mood swings. Sometimes before going out, he'd be making me my favorite oat milk lattes and checking I'm okay. But when returning home, he'd just slump on the couch and order me to make him sandwiches. But hey, even soulmates have the occasional hiccup. I told Daddy and my sister, Mia, how perfect he was, but they were both so negative. Destined lover or a gold digger? If this boyfriend of yours is so perfect, then where is he? And, um, actually, they didn't see Robert's face yet. It's just he got camera fright. I desperately wanted to take some couple's pictures, but he dodged every time. Babes, this face is only for you. Aw, he was so sweet and super caring. Despite Dad and Mia's disapproval, he still attentively asked about their hobbies and work. He was just perfect. There was nothing to ask more from him. Uh, actually, there was. Come here. Just a secret between you and me. I think Robert's gonna propose to me. These days, he seems fidgeting and nervous. Then one day, Robert asked me to meet him in this expensive restaurant. I was sure this would be it. Gosh, I've dreamt of a wedding with my Prince Charming all my life. Yes, yes, I'd like to be Mrs. Hemmings. Look, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a train ticket. Sally, my dad's just passed away. I need to go back to my hometown for a while. Then he got up and never came back. I searched everywhere for him, but it was as if he'd vanished into thin air. I knew he was grieving, but he didn't have to disappear like that. I traveled to his hometown, but everyone all said that Robert Hemmings had died years ago. So, who was my Robert? Did I really know anything about my soulmate? Could Daddy be right about Robert being a gold digger? Enough of your silliness, Sally. It's time to grow up. I couldn't go against Dad anymore. I had to go back home and work at the agency. At least I had Mia here. But no, I barely ever saw her. Ugh, she was really too busy being head of the marketing department to come see me? I felt so lost and wasn't enjoying the job at all. Worse of all, I was still missing Robert so badly that I kept making silly mistakes. Everyone was so mad at me. If only Robert was here, he'd cheer me up. One day, Mia asked me to deliver some outfits for a photo shoot. I arrived to see the shoot was already underway. Snap that camera, darling, while I'm still young. Boy, oh boy, that dude was sure full of himself. My curiosity poked out and I tried to sneak a peek at him, but when I saw who one of the models was, I dropped the clothes in shock. OMG, it was Robert! I charged through the group of people and wrapped my arms around him. Robert, where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere! But he pushed me away. Get off me! Who are you? Uh, why are you all over me like a rash? I don't know you. What? But I'm your girlfriend. Hey, you wish. Line up first. Easy there, tiger. This is Henry, our hottest new model. Henry who? I had no idea what was going on, so I pulled Mia outside. Mia, he looks identical to Robert. Not every guy is your ungrateful ex. It's not uncommon for people to look similar. Your infatuation for Robert is making you imagine things. That might be... true... She talked with me for a while, then put me in charge of the shoot for her. But I couldn't brush off Robert's image on that Henry guy. Then overheard some whisperings. Henry might be a newbie, but in the last month, he's had three major magazine shoots. Rumor has it, it's down to a secret backer. Hmm, something didn't feel right here. So I decided to dive in deeper to solve the mystery of Robert or not Robert. And I easily became Henry's assistant. Early the next morning, I dressed and eagerly ran to Henry's house. Robert usually slept in, so if Henry was Robert, surely he wouldn't have woke- We're late! Huh? Oh, surprise! We're not late, as I changed today's schedule into a charity activity. Then, not letting him have any chance to question, I immediately dragged him to the car. Last night when the sponsor called, I nodded without any hesitation. Just imagine, those shiny cheekbones on a soup kitchen flyer? For the art and for the community. Only, when we arrived at the location, there was just a field full of cows and not a soup can in sight. Ugh, did you donate grass to the cows? Still so gullible. How do you know I'm gullible? The staff told me. What gives? Then Henry Watt, leaving me there with the cows. But wait a minute. Those moves had a little too much sachet. Was Robert that feminine before?
Hmm, so how about some of my homemade cake, Robert always wolfed down. This is Robert's fave dish, right, Robert? He started coughing and mumbled out that he was so hungry, he would have eaten anything. Sure, hen. So, let's see what excuses you would make in the cooking show, chef. Your excellent cooking skill is going to give you away, dear Robert. Keep up the great act, then. But my smile faded when I saw Henry breaking the pasta in half, mistaking tomato sauce for hot sauce, and setting a pan on fire, causing everyone to run outside in fright. I sure had to do a lot of apologizing to the producers to get out of that one. I didn't understand why my plan went so wrong. Okay, Robert loved animals. No way he could resist an adorable puppy. So I bought my new dachshund, Cora, into work. But to my surprise, when Cora hurried over to greet him, he screaming like a banshee and ran along the hallway like being chased by zombies. Is it possible? I might have figured out the truth, but I still wanted to meet him the last time to sort things out. But when he showed up, he seemed different, easygoing and thoughtful, and so Robert. Since when did you take up this dangerous sport? When your ex left, are you that mad at him? I kept missing, and it was so frustrating. It's like I couldn't get anything right. Come now. Your palms have turned all red. You're so weird today. Weird how? Wouldn't you normally be like this? Or like this? Drop the act. I already know everything. Know what? You and my dad are dating, aren't you? You want to be my stepmother in your dreams. I was nuts to think you're my Robert. What? I don't like your dad. Uh, uh, I didn't want any more of his lies. Only he pulled me back and kissed me. I was still trying to process all of this when he received a call, then ran away, leaving me all alone like that time. There was no mistaking those lips. He's my Robert. But why did he keep denying it? I needed advice from Mia, but she wasn't home, so I waited in the living room. After a while, the door opened, and I also heard Henry's voice. Why was he here? I immediately hid in the corner, only to see my sister kiss him on the cheek. Henry, my sweet boyfriend. Boyfriend? What? So, Dad wasn't Henry's secret backer. It was Mia. But he just kissed me. Was he two-timing me with my own sister? That night, so many thoughts were packing at my head. So my sister dated my boyfriend? When did they meet? Wait, was that why Robert never wanted to take pictures with me? Because it's more convenient for him to approach Mia? Had he planned everything from the beginning? This hurt so much, but I didn't want to upset Mia. I needed to find out the full details before telling her anything. So at work, I pretended to act normal while cooking up a plan for Henry's upcoming birthday. I knew he was going to brush it off, but I invited all the staff to his place. And of course, he couldn't run anywhere. And his manager, a.k.a. me, just accidentally spilled water on him so he'd take his vest off. As predicted, his room key was in his pocket. I went to Henry's room and swiped the card, but it required a password. I had three attempts to get this right. I tried Robert's birthday, then mine, but nope. I had one last chance. So, with a shaking hand, I pressed in our anniversary date, and it opened. I rummaged through everything and found a lot of documents about modeling Sank. Then I found something else, a photo of him with... Him? Right at this moment, someone grabbed my shoulder. I turned and saw Robert, but before I could talk, he flashed me his police badge and arrested me for breaking in. He led me into a dark room, and I heard talking outside. How dumb of you to use your anniversary as the password. Then Robert barged into the room, followed by another Robert? The truth's out, anyway. That's the Robert you're looking for, and his real name is Travis, and I'm Edward, not Henry. We're undercover cops investigating your father. Turned out, Travis was asked to approach me as Robert first, and his brother Edward sometimes filled his place when he was busy. That's why Robert's temperament was so hot and cold. But we couldn't anticipate that this kid would actually like you. Love is strictly forbidden in our job. So Robert had to go. So I created Henry and approached the suspect's other daughter to continue the mission. That was the plan until my simp brother went to see you without telling me. So the one who kissed me was... It was me. I just really wanted to see you. This is crazy, but why my dad? What did he do? Edward revealed that he suspected modeling sync was a front for human trafficking, and my dad was the brains behind the operation. No way! My daddy is a good man. Edward, he was always kind to you, wasn't he? People only show you the version they want you to see. Even this silly boy fooled you. What makes you think your cunning father couldn't do the same? Do you know why he's especially interested in Henry? Because he's his next target. I'm sorry, Sally, but it's true. 
I know it's hard to hear, but we need your help to stop this. Did my dad really do all these awful things? But that meant my life was a lie. Whether I liked the truth or not, I needed to discover it once and for all. I held my phone in shaking hands and waited for the message, even though I desperately didn't want to receive it. Sticking to Edward's plan, I ran into Dad's office in a panic. Dad, Henry's about to quit. I found a one-way plane ticket to Ontario, and it leaves tonight. What? It can't be. But the message just came. Just like Edward calculated, Edward in his Henry disguise was kidnapped and brought to the port to be trapped. So, it's true. My dad's a criminal. Then, the police officers who already surrounded that area will arrest him and... Sally? Dad, why are you still here? Sweetie, it's the middle of the night. Where else would I be but home? Right at that moment, Travis called me. Edward's tracking device indicates he's moving in the opposite direction of the police ambush. I know where he's going. You should go straight there. I asked Dad to drive me there. If Dad wasn't behind it, then it had to be someone who worked directly with the models and knew that Henry was about to leave tonight. The only person who got all three was... Mia. We arrived at the same time as Travis and the police. Travis rang the bell, and the door opened on Mia and her minions. What? But we just took him. Sally? Dad? Mia was still as sharp as ever. But still, the police were one step ahead. It's you? Travis reached me first and protected me from her while Edward pulled me aback. You tricked me! We have literally everything! Why did you have to go down this route? You're always Dad's favorite, while I've always been a spare part. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into modeling sink, yet one day it will be all yours. I'd rather burn and ruin the agency I've worked so hard for than see it in others' hands. No, no, you got it wrong. I love you both. They arrested Mia and found the kidnapped models. What Mia did was wrong, but she was still my sister. So Dad and I visited her in prison. Mia, I'm sorry for everything. I thought you were stronger than Sally and when Mom passed away, that she needed me more than you did. I know it's late, but I promise I will make it up to you. As we left, I saw Edward and Travis. Then Travis pulled me aside, apologizing for using my feelings to aid their investigation. I still love Travis, but I couldn't get over that. He deceived me, and I wasn't going to let anyone treat me like a gullible fool ever again. So I quit my job at the company and decided to leave my comfy, overprotected nest to experience the real world. After everything that had happened, I maintained my own belief that after the storm, the sun always comes up. I studied abroad, participated in multiple charity organizations, and became a teacher in remote areas. And one time, while I was teaching in a remote jungle location, I bumped into a familiar face. Don't worry. I'm not running into you again this time. I was taking mom to the hospital when noticed the nurse was trying to hurt her. Excuse me, miss. You're making a mistake. That syringe should go into the brachial artery. You're in the wrong location and that's dangerous. Are you trying to tell me that I don't know how to do my job? I have been doing this job longer than you have been alive. No, you're going to hurt my mother. Bummy, be quiet. Stop disrespecting and let the nurse do her job. No, no, don't touch her. What is going on here? Your nurse got the location of the brachial artery wrong, and I was trying to correct her, but she wouldn't listen. I'm sorry, she reads a lot of books, and she is convinced she knows as much as a doctor. But she is correct, the nurse is wrong. Ma'am, your daughter just saved your life. Hello, my name is Bummy from Nigeria, and I am just 15, but I'm already the world's youngest doctor. And today, I will tell you about my crazy adventure. Before that, please like and subscribe. It all started when I was little. My mom used to take me to the library where she worked and leave me to wander around. That's when I found my interest in medicine. By the time I was six, I knew everything about the human body. But it only started to bloom when I met Dr. Jeff the other day. He told me I had a photographic memory and encouraged me to pursue medicine. While my classmates struggled to understand fractions, I had already figured out algebraic equations. School became boring, so after school, every day, I would go to Dr. Jeff's hospital, and he would let me observe everything, and instructed me to perform some procedures from simple to more complex. Bummy, you've learned too fast. I hope someday you have a chance to spread your wings further, cause soon I'll have nothing else to teach you. Then, one day, I was sitting on the porch to finish my medical illustration, when I noticed a group of foreigners approaching. Turns out they are American aid workers, who would be staying in our neighborhood for a while, with some humanitarian projects. Days after, they were carrying out an immunization exercise. Everything was going great, when suddenly, one of them fell to the ground. I ran to the scene as fast as I could to see him choking. Blood was nearly drained from his face. Without thinking further, I ran back into my house and grabbed my aid kit, but was blocked by some woman. 
Kid, go play somewhere else. Don't take off oxygen here. Someone's choking. Do you want me to help your friend or not? Upon that, I immediately dunked the Swiss knife in alcohol to sterilize them, made an incision, and then placed the straw as a temporary breathing tube. The man who was almost turning blue took his first breath. Let's get him to the hospital. It's not far from here. I called Dr. Jeff to inform his situation, and a few days later, the man finally woke up. That night, someone knocked on my door, and I was surprised to see the woman that day. Hello, I'm Carol. Sorry to disturb you, but I came to talk about your daughter. I have traveled far and wide, but in my life, I have never met a genius like her. I think that an American education will do so much for her. America? My sweet child was fine here. No offense, though, but I'm afraid a life here is not the ideal environment for her to develop. But America will. We can get her into a gifted program and make sure she reaches her full potential. But who is going to take care of her? She would live with me. I promise I would take care of her like my own daughter. And the next time you see Bummy, she will have become the extraordinary doctor she was meant to be. What do you say, baby? I didn't like the idea of leaving my mom alone here. But that's when what Dr. Jaff said earlier echoed in my mind. Right, that might be a chance that he meant. Mom, I want to go. The goodbyes were quick, and I was on the plane heading to California with an eager heart toward the new land of dreams ahead. Welcome to America. Please feel at home. Oh god, my phone has been buzzing since they talked about you on Facebook. Hang on, I need to take this call. You must be bummy, right? So you're the girl our mom can't shut up about. Hi, nice to meet you. are not welcome here. What? Oh, great! You have met my kids, Camille and Ted. Welcome home, Mom. I made dinner. I hoped we could sit, and you can tell us all about your tri- Oh, not today, sweet pea. A show wants an exclusive on you right now, bummy. N now But I just- That means people are super excited about you. Come on, let's go. Then Carol took me somewhere else with a bunch of strangers holding some kind of lights that blinded my eyes. Suddenly, a man walked toward me. You're a bummy, right? Hi, I'm Martin. Can we start now? Start what? Without letting me catch up on what's going on, Carol already had me change into stiff clothes and pushed me into a chair opposite the man. Good morning, everyone. Our show today has a special guest, Bummy Alana, the youngest doctor from Nigeria. Or maybe the world. Bummy, why don't you start by telling us your first case? Uh, um, hi. When I was six... My friend was choking on a bone, so I performed the Heimlich maneuver as I read it in a book before. And the show continued with loads of questions about me. I answered them all, but to be honest, I don't know why I was doing what here. I felt such a relief when it ended. But the next morning... Oh, there you are! Rise and shine, my little genius! We have a busy day today! I laid out your clothes, so get ready! We leave in one hour! I thought it was a one-time thing. It rather turned into it my daily routine. I would be in a show after a show, sitting in front of cameras answering ridiculous questions. I felt like I was making a fool of myself. Carol, I'm tired of the cameras and the interviews. I came here to learn. Oh, darling, we want the same thing. A medical university you need to be at is expensive, and these interviews would help us get a sponsor soon, I believe. In the meantime, just focus on that and your study at school, okay? Yeah. I had to enroll at a public high school with her children. But high school here was weird. In Nigeria, I was supposed to be entering 11th grade. But now in America, I had to enroll in the 9th. It's like I was left behind. Not just that, Camille, Carol's daughter, seemed to not like me and was determined to make my life a living hell. She usually hid my textbooks or my shoes before school, making me search everywhere and I ended up being late for school almost every day. Bummy, I don't think you appeared on TV shows that you can discard school regulations. Ugh, it's her, not me! And everything got worse. The people at school continued to undermine me and act like I was a dummy. Excuse me, sir, I got a C-, minus, even though I got all the questions right. Well, you didn't use the words from the textbook like I asked. But I'm correct. Shouldn't I be allowed to express my answers in my own words? Not in my class. Genius, they say. That day after school, I was home to find all of my clothes all torn apart. That's when I saw Camille smirk. You ruined my clothes! Next time, your clothes won't be the only damaged things if you stay here. Okay, fine. That's the last straw. It's time to teach her that I'm not an easy prey for her. I snuck into her room to mess with her makeup products. Ha! Huh, let's see how you can decorate your face to school. But on the way out, I noticed her iPad. Wow, she had a channel herself. And what's this? Hmm, was it Carol and her children? What are you doing here? Startled, I accidentally dropped the sculpture on the floor. Oh god, my sculpture! Do you know what it is? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. 
You're not making my life miserable enough? Then out of nowhere, Carol barged in. What are you doing? You silly child. Apologize to Bummy right now or you are grounded. Carol, no, it's my fault. She didn't. I'm sorry, Bummy. Then she ran out of her room, hands holding her face. I thought I saw her tears streaming down. What happened yesterday kept me tossing and turning the whole night. It's true Camille wasn't the most pleasant person, but Carol shouldn't have done that to her. Bummy, I bet you haven't seen those tools in your hometown before, right? <laughs> haven't you? So you're not ready to dissect a rat yet. Just watch others first. Whatever. I came here for new challenges, but all I got was mocking and belittling. Hey, are you alright? I raised my head to see Ted. Is this because of the biology class? Nah, I couldn't care less about them. They just can't accept a new kid more brilliant than they are. If it's not, so what troubles you? Um, why your sister hates me so much? She doesn't. She hates that you are everything she is not. Do you know that this is the longest time our mother has been around us since our father left? But in fact, she wasn't here for us. Then he told us how Carol was always traveling, leaving him and Camille alone, and it surely caused a deep hole in her children, especially Camille. That's why she acted like that to me. Actually, that sculpture was the one Mom brought us when she went to Disneyland years ago. Camille treasured it the most. My heart broke for them, for Camille. I understood her pain, and deep down, I know I needed to do something to help fix this relationship. I came up with the idea of inviting Ted and Camille to go along with me to our shows so that they could spend more time with their mother. Seeing them happy together, it warmed my heart to know family will always be family, no matter what. Soon Ted and I became closer. I didn't know he had quite a craftsmanship with his sculptures. And you know what? Recently Camille seemed to be super nice towards me. We might make good friends in the near future, right? <laughs> then, one night, while we were having dinner, Carol broke an exciting news to me. Bummy, congratulations! Some sponsors sent your application to a top medical school! Good job, Bummy! I haven't been this proud before, my child! Finally, I was a step closer to my dream! A few days later, I was preparing for my interview when I heard Carol screamed. What's wrong? You got a C minus in biology? Someone mailed the sponsor a copy of your test, and now they are uninterested. They don't believe that you're a genius with this low score. Oh, my hard work is gone. Who did this? Ted and I looked at Camille at the same time. She was biting her nails nervously and sweating. So Camille did it to me? After everything happened? Camille, why? Cause, cause mom always loved her than us. What? It's okay. It's good that it happened. I was going to reject it anyway. What? I am very thankful for your kindness all this time, but I couldn't live on your help any longer. But Carol, there's a bigger problem here. You have been so buried in what could happen in the future to other kids, while you have ignored the present. You've ignored your kids. You have been looking in the wrong places for extraordinary kids. Did you know Camille has a YouTube channel with over 10,000 followers? Did you know that Ted is incredible with woodwork? He has a sculpture of you that he carries around, hoping for a day he can give it to you. They need you. Really need you. More than me or any kids need you. So where would you go? I just got admitted into a special program at the John Hopkins University. I was going to tell you tonight. Actually, I was preparing for the interview with them. Oh my, you're stronger than I thought. Can I see it? The sculpture of me, I mean. It's so beautiful. I'm so sorry, guys. I wanted to be someone significant. I wanted to be a big deal, but there is no bigger deal than being your mom. I'm sorry. I'm going to make it up to you. Bummy, I'm so sorry. I was angry and didn't think enough. I am so sorry. And thank you for everything you did to us. I know it's hard for you to forgive me, but... I forgive you. The car was eerily silent as the taxi drove me to the interview. I read my acceptance letter over and over during the trip. I earned it by my hard work, and I was determined to reach my dreams by my own effort. Finally, I could come to the place where people saw my true potential and attempted to help me reach my fullest. And here I was, ready to hold my dream medical degree. Our school has never witnessed a prodigious student like Bummy Alana. Only in one year, she has not only finished her course, but also contributed greatly to endoscopy surgery of the U.S. with her new discovery. Thank you, Mr. Adams. First, I couldn't find enough words to tell how glad I am for all the opportunities America has given me. The dean offered me a position here at the university. I am grateful, but I had to reject it. The woman who first took me to America thought she was saving me, but she never realized I was where I needed to be. My home, where I was much needed than here. 
So I'm going back home to my family in Nigeria, and I hope to use all my knowledge to help my community. But whenever American needs me, I'll always be here to offer my humble help. Here they are. Carol, Ted, and Camille were also here to celebrate with me. They were all sad to know I was not staying here. But life is always open for a reunion, right? And finally, I was home with Mom and Dr. Jeff. One day, I was checking the new pack of medical equipment sent from America when I saw a sculpture of me. You sent for me? I didn't think you would make it. As long as it's you, nothing's impossible. Oh, wait. Hey guys! Hi, Bummy! Welcome to your mother-daughter channel! My name is Carol, and this is my extraordinary daughter, Camille. They send their regards. Hi! Ashley here, a superstar in the making. At least I was until the accident happened and I was left with a scar. With a huge audition coming up, my manager boyfriend Callum persuaded me to get my twin sister, Bridget, to pose on stage as me. She took on the glitzy parts of my life while I stayed in the background and recorded at the studio with David, my grumpy but talented music producer. It was only supposed to be until my scar healed, but then the doctor told me the devastating news. The scar was here to stay. Upset, I went around to Callum's for support and saw him there with Bridget. They were leaning in to kiss. I couldn't believe my sister and my boyfriend would do this to me. So with rage swirling through me, I karate kicked open the door and barged inside to confront the conniving snakes. How could you? My boyfriend and my own sister! He's your boyfriend? I, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. No, you did nothing wrong. I fell for her first, Ashley. Can you blame me? She's a flawless superstar. You'd understand because you used to be her. At least until you crumbled. I was freaking hit by a car, you douchebag. But it didn't matter to him at all. That's when it hit me. Callum never loved me. I was just a tool to him. You can't trust him, Bridget. It's only a matter of time before he decides you're no use to him anymore and ditches you, just like what he's doing to me right now. And I'm going to make sure the whole world knows what a jerk he is. Callum suddenly lunged towards me, then aggressively dragged me out of the house. You think you can threaten me with a big mouth? Who's gonna believe you, huh? You're just a shadow of Bridget, a flawed, pathetic version of her, so get lost. You, you'll never get away with this. Just you wait and see. Days later, I was still hung up on his cruel words, but I had to do something to take back what's mine. So I spent ages covering my scar with makeup, then showed up at an event I was supposed to attend. I confidently strutted up to the entrance. Whoa, whoa. Nice try, Ashley. But the scar gives you away. Try Kylo Ren next time. <laughs> that stung. Feeling hopeless, I started walking, and my feet unconsciously led me to the studio. I turned on the lights and played my previous records. Surprisingly, my singing had improved one by one. So I turned up the song volume and sang and danced along. I was busting some crazy dance moves when I suddenly heard clapping. I didn't know you've got the groove. Come to think of it, I've never seen you this happy before. You have no idea what I've been through. I felt safe around him, so before I could stop myself, I blurted out what had happened. He insisted on taking me somewhere fun to cheer me up. Turns out David's fun place is the super cool Japanese fair. We shared some huge rainbow cotton candy and lit sparklers and drew musical notes in the air. Then, as we walked past a stall with some fantastically colorful masks, I stopped dead and stared at them. Hey, I have an idea. I should start a new singing career wearing a cool mask. I mean, it's not the most original idea since Sia and Marshmallow have already done it, but I can hide my face and Callum wouldn't even notice to stop me. That's actually a great idea. Hmm. Here, this one looks cute on you. Holy cow! Red alert! Red alert! You're falling for this charming, handsome, talented music producer guy. It's on me, by the way. Consider it a lucky charm, okay? For sure. I swooned and was motivated to create a YouTube channel right away, starring me singing with my mask on and used Vixie as my stage name. At first, I only covered other artists' songs, but as my confidence and following grew, I began singing the songs David helped me write. Although the netizens quickly spotted the similarities between my voice and Bridget's pre-recordings, they're both mine. But the difference is, one uses a ton of auto-tune and one does not. Then, one by one, I released more songs, and over the course of a few months, my channel grew to over 1 million subscribers. For the first time in my life, people actually saw me for my musical talents, not for the way I looked. 
So to thank them, David and I spent weeks in the studio composing a special song called Thistle's Bloom to release on Valentine's Day. Then one day, David was invited to the Grand Gala, which was a massive event full of the hottest stars, and he took me along with him. The party went off to a great start, and everyone was so complimentary about my music. I was dancing alone while David talked business with some music producer. But then, Bridget suddenly appeared and tried talking to me. Vixie, hi! I love your look! I ignored her and went to leave, when suddenly I got this itchy feeling in my throat, and I felt my face begin to swell. I looked down and gasped when I saw pecans inside my muffin. Oh no, I'm allergic to pecan! I ran to the toilet and took off the mask to catch my breath when the bathroom door snapped open and in walked Bridget. Come on, Ash, I already knew it was you. Sorry, guys, (laughs) the door seems to be stuck. She slammed the door shut and went trying to help me. I didn't want her help, but I didn't have much choice. I put my mask back on and let her place her jacket around my shoulders and sneak me out of there. She got her driver to pick us up around the back of the building and take me home. Then she made sure I took my allergy medicine. Don't expect me to thank you for this. No, I... After you left Callum's house, he told me you gave up singing for me and that you gave us your blessing. But when I saw videos of Vixie going viral, I instantly knew it was you, and he'd lied to me. Yeah, he's good at doing that. I feel really bad for what happened, so I want to make it right. I'll give you back your place as a singer. You're serious? Absolutely! I was so relieved you hadn't given up on your passion. You have no idea how amazing you sound. Actually, I do, but I can't take all the credit. David helped me produce the song, and we're actually releasing it this Valentine. Really? I can't wait to hear it. Fine, you can hear the demo if you want. She loved the song, and I had to admit, it felt good having my twin back. A few days later, I was fully recovered from my allergy attack and feeling excited about my big song reveal. But then I went on my laptop and saw that Bridget had released a new song, Thistle Bloom, my song. I immediately called Bridget to find out what was going on. Surprised, weren't you? Now you know how I feel. I've always been inferior to you. It's about time you be the loser. Oh, and BTW, Callum and I are officially dating. He picked me over you, so did your fans. (laughs) They definitely won't be fooled. I'll show them the truth. I went online and insisted that the song was my work. But not only did the netizens not believe me, but they also wanted me cancelled. This Ashley wannabe is so tragic. I always thought this masked girl was sketchy. She thought she was so sleek stealing Ashley's song. I had to watch my subscriber count take a nosedive. All my hard work had gone to waste. I turned my phone off and just sat in a dark room wishing I was beautiful again. Maybe people would believe me then. Suddenly, the door opened and in walked David. You've been ignoring my calls and messages, so I came to see if you were okay. Seems you're not. No, I'm hideous and now my career is over. Your career isn't over because of how you look. Can't you see? You're very talented and you're all set to become a great artist. That's why Bridget is so jealous and insecure. She has to steal your work. So people still believe Bridget because she's beautiful. No one wants to believe in this sketchy, masked girl who's too afraid to show her scarred face. Look, I can't hear most of the words you just said, but all I know is you can't let a minor setback like this stop you from doing what you love. He then took something out of his ears. Hang on, were they hearing aids? My hearing started deteriorating when I was 15. When I told everyone I wanted to work in the music industry, they all thought I was Delulu. But five years later, and look at me now. Of course, it was hard for me too, but I never let my disadvantage get in the way of my dream. You, you really did it! Sorry, what you say? Oh, that actually made a lot of sense. If David could overcome this and continue to compose and produce amazing music, then I could overcome my body image issues and become a real singer in my own right and under my name. I started by snooping around my old fan pages and found out that Bridget was going to hold a press conference for the release of her latest album and perform Thistle Bloom. I devised a plan to get there before she did, and that includes David puncturing his own car tire and getting Bridget and her team caught in traffic. On the press conference's stage, I was shaking like crazy, but as soon as I heard the audience chanting my name, I knew I could do this. I stepped on stage, and while the crowd was too stunned to react, I quickly started performing an acoustic version of Thistle Bloom, and the crowd went quiet. I could see it in their eyes. They were moved. Then the screen behind me lit up and played a video of me and David working on the song. When my performance ended, the audience erupted in applause. 
I was overwhelmed with joy. But then a reporter suddenly stood up and asked, Are you the masked singer Vixie? What are you doing here instead of Ashley? I knew this was my moment of truth, so I took a deep breath, then removed my mask. I'm actually the real Ashley. The audience gasped in shock. Buzzling started spreading. I got the scar from a car accident. I was so hungry for fame, but believed I could never make it as a star with a scar. So I asked my twin sister, Bridget, to take my place. I'm sorry that we deceived you like that, and I promise that from now on, I will always stay true to myself, scar or no scar. Then I stepped down from the stage and walked past Bridget, who was trying to escape the reporters. She looked around and called Callum's name for help, but in typical Callum style, he was trying to blend into the crowd. Ashley, was the twin swapping plan your idea? No, it was actually my ex-manager's, aka cheating ex-boyfriend's idea, wasn't it, Callum? I watched him look mortified as they swarmed around him. <laughs> it seems like he's going to have a hard time with his career in the future. That's karma for you. Then I strolled out of there with David waiting at the door, leaving all the buzzing behind me. I started living my life just the way I wanted and no longer cared what Bridget and Callum were up to. Then one day, I was driving home from the studio when I saw Bridget surrounded by some thugs. I called the police and then made sure she was okay. Turns out mom was in debt and the collectors were now forcing Bridget to pay up. My life's a failure. I tried to be you to escape this pathetic reality, but got carried away and wanted to replace you. I don't have any excuse for my actions. Just punish me however you want. I stayed silent for a while, then eventually decided to drive her home. It made sense now. Bridget despised me because she'd spent years suffering with mom, while I had a privileged, happy life with dad. I felt bad for her, because after all, she's just a victim of mom's neglect. So, I used the money Bridget had made while being me to pay off mom's debt, and then I spoke to dad and arranged for her to move in with us. Things aren't perfect between us, but we're getting there. She's still super shy and moody, but she's doing a lot better than she was. I learned to accept the scar on my face and became a real singer. I may not be a household name, but I guess I'm pretty famous and also an inspiration to young girls who feel self-conscious about the way they look. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Best of all, I now have a cute, kind, loving, albeit grouchy at times, boyfriend. David. We even opened a music company that judged our clients on their talent, not their appearance. I was cuddled up next to David watching the news when the reporter said there was a groundbreaking new scar treatment available. Do you still want to remove your scar? No, as it's now a part of me.